Hello everyone, all the commands that we'll be using for this door will all be copied in the description. Some of them will require slight modifications as we go along, and I will go over how to do all of that when we get there. So, yeah. So the absolute first thing we're going to want to do is just sort of build up our frame. And for me, I'm going to be just making a simple 2x3 frame for our door here. Now, you can feel free to have a different width if you want. However, it does have to be an even number of blocks wide. So you've probably already built your frame if you're watching this video. So the next thing you're going to want to do is figure out which axis your door is going along. Now, the easiest way to do that is to press F3 and look at the little cursor in the middle. Essentially, if the red line aligns with your door like it does for me here, that means your door is going along the X axis. And if it aligns along uh, the blue line like it would if it were like this, that's very short, <laughs> but if it aligns along the blue line, that means it's on the Z axis. So you just want to do that and take note of it because we're going to use slightly different commands depending on which it is. While you're doing that, you're also going to want to figure out which side is sort of the positive side and which is the negative side. So once again, in your F3 menu, uh, this time you can just stand in the middle and look at one of the sides and check whether it says positive X or positive Z or negative X or negative Z. Lastly, there's one command you always need to have running no matter which axis your door is on. So what you want to do to make sure it's always running is say slash give at S repeating command block. And um, I like to put my command blocks just like somewhere below my build. You can put them wherever you want. I'm just going to put this one right here. You're going to right click on this and you're going to paste in the very first command that will be in the description. Um, and once you have that in, you're going to say instead of needs redstone, click on that to make it always active. And then that should be all good. Finally, one last command we need to run before we get started is actually the second command in the description. We're just going to be making a quick scoreboard objective. Uh, so you can just paste that one into the chat as well. And that is all good. You only need to run that one once. It doesn't need to be in a command block or anything. Once you've actually created this scoreboard, you're going to take the third and I guess final command from the first section of the description, paste that into chat as well, and run that. And now scoreboards are all set up. Now we get into commands that are going to be different, whether you're on the x-axis or the z-axis. Uh, you don't really have to worry about the difference. I'm going to make it perfectly clear which one is which uh, when I'm writing them all in the description. So you should still be able to just copy and paste just like you were before. So these commands, you only need to run them once. So you'd think you could just put them in the chat, but actually they're too long to put in the chat. So you do have to give yourself a command block. And I already have one apparently. You have to place it down and paste it into there. Uh, and then just literally give yourself a button and run that command. And it will give you a special command block. And then you're just going to do that one more time for the other command block giving command. So now you'll have two command blocks called positive and negative. Uh, so the reason I've given you these special command blocks is because uh, we actually have to summon some entities to make this door work. Um, because in order for it to slide, we have to have like these special blocks. The point is to actually summon in these entities. I've given you these special command blocks and the way they work, you're just going to put um, unsurprisingly the one called negative in every block on the negative half of your door and then just break it behind and same with positive. And when you do that, you will get this nice little door, which will actually be able to slide once we do a little bit more work with it. But before we get into that sliding, there's a couple more choices that you're actually going to have to make. The first choice is a choice you've already made. You have to decide how wide the door is. Um, and when I'm talking about width from here on out, I'm not actually talking about the total distance. I'm talking about, I guess, like half the distance, essentially how far one block has to slide. Next up, you have to decide how fast you want the door to slide open. Um, and so that number is going to be given in blocks per tick. Now I know that's probably kind of a meaningless number, so I'm going to show right now a clip of a door sliding open at exactly one tenth of a block per tick, so that you can kind of get a sense. And that's also the speed that I'm just going to be using for this door. So just keep those two numbers in your head, because we're going to be using them somewhat soon in one of the commands. Now one last piece of information you need to gather, uh, you should stand right as close to the middle of your door as you can, like you're going to be sort of in between two blocks. Um, it's also important that you try to center yourself sort of 
this way as well as this way, and then you're going to press F3, and you're going to look at your coordinates up where it says X, Y, Z. Now the Y, which is the middle coordinate, you'll just keep exactly like it is, but the left coordinate and the right coordinate, uh, the X and Z, you're going to round to the nearest half. So I recommend just typing that in chat so that you sort of have it there. So I'm going to say 195, in fact, add 0 0.0 if it's uh, exactly 195. I'm going to say 22.0 again, and then 232.5, because I'm, once again, just rounding to the nearest half a number. It's not that important that you get this step exactly right. If you just need to, like, completely skip the decimals altogether, that's fine. It might not work quite as perfectly, but it's, it's really not anything to worry about. So if you were confused by that, just don't even worry about it. But then you're just going to go ahead and actually write that in the chat. Um, so just you have it there. If you can remember it on your own, fine, but you know. So as we get started with this next section, we're actually going to need also a chain command block. So you can just say slash give at s chain command block. And there you go. So to get started on these commands, you're going to want to just build a chain of command blocks. So start by placing a repeating command block and then place five chain command blocks. And as you do this, it's very important to make sure that the arrows on the side of each command block point towards the next command block, otherwise it won't run. And so now we can literally just get started copying and pasting commands. Uh, there's a couple of changes we're going to have to make afterwards, but I think it's easier if we just copy them all in. The exact section you're going to be copying, I'm probably just going to call it like sliding section or something in the description. You're going to be, you know, obviously deciding which to use based on X or Z. And yeah, just go ahead and do that. Also, I just realized I should probably mention when you first paste this in, it's going to be all red. That's because you're going to have to change a few things for it to even work at all. But once again, I think it's easier to just paste it in and then change it later. So the first change you're going to want to make to all these command blocks is you're going to want to go back to these coordinates that you put in the chat earlier. You're going to want to copy them and you're going to want to go back to the very beginning of every single command and take where it says coordinates, delete that, and just paste in the actual numbers. The next change you're going to have to make, and in fact the only other change you're going to have to make, is you're going to want to go to command blocks number 2, 4, and 6, and you're going to open it up and go back to where it has the hashtag. And instead of hashtag, uh, you're going to have to do a little bit of math. So the exact calculations you're going to do here are you're going to be taking the width or rather like the half width of the door, like I described earlier, divided by the speed that you want the door to open at, all of that minus one. So in my case, I had a width of one, a speed of 0 0.1, uh, one divided by 0 0.1 is 10, minus one is nine. Um, and that's gonna be the same number for all three of these command blocks. For the other one, um, it says one in the same spot, just leave that as one. Also be sure, that you leave these two dots. It should say dot dot nine or whatever number you have. So once you've actually made those replacements, you should be able to open up this first command block again, change this needs redstone to always active and fly out. And then your door will actually open up beautifully. And yeah, that's pretty much how you make a simple sliding glass door in Minecraft with command blocks. Um, I'm going to go over three things now real quick, which are how to make other doors in the same world, how to make doors made out of a different material besides glass panes, and how to make the doors open even when you're farther away. If you're not interested in any of those three things, you're done here. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you want to see other cool things you can do with command blocks. But if you are interested in those three things, here they are. So the first one, how to make a second door. Um, unfortunately, you're going to have to change like literally every command. Like there's pretty minor changes, but you are going to have to change them. So thing number one, in the first two commands, which we ran in like separate command blocks here, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and change where it says uh, door plus one or door minus one at the end to a door plus two or minus two. And then you're just going to use the new command block that that command gives you to build your second door. In every single one of these command blocks, uh, pretty near the beginning where it says if score door one door, you're going to want to change that from door one to door two. Once you've done that for all six command blocks, 
The first four command blocks, you also have to change it from door plus one or door minus one to door plus two. And lastly, in the last two command blocks at the end here where it says door one, change that also to door two. Just kidding, that wasn't lastly, because you're also going to have to take this final command that I had you run before turning it on and run it again, but with door two instead of door one. And once you've done all those like five things, uh, you should be able to actually have a second door. You're also, of course, going to have to change things when it's at like a different position. You're going to have to get new coordinates. If it's like a different size, you have to change that. And yeah, if you're looking to change the radius of activation for the door, the good news is that's much easier than the other one. So if you want to change that radius, go ahead, open up the first command block, change always active to needs redstone, and then go back here where it says distance equals dot dot three, that's pretty near the end, change the dot dot three to a dot dot whatever you want the radius to actually be, um, just call it 20, sure. And that will make it be a much wider radius. Once you've done that, go back to the first one, change needs redstone to always active again. Finally, you can see I've cleared out my door frame here, and that's because if you want to make um, like a different material for the door, it's as simple as going into these sort of external command block giving commands. Going way back, uh, this part is a little bit tricky, um, but you want to look for where it says glass pane, all right, glass underscore pane, and just change that to the name of any block you want. So maybe you could say like red stained glass pane, I'll call it. And if I copy that, um, of course, you're also going to want to run it again for the other kind of command block, the, uh, the positive and negative. Um, and then when you place them in, you'll be getting uh, the different kind of block all nice and tidy here. And I do believe that that is just about as much customization as is possible for this door. Um, if there's something else you want to try, feel free to let me know in the comments. I already gave my whole thanks for watching spiel, so um, no thanks for watching. Thanks for nothing, and I'll see you next time. Bye.